Hello, this is Chris Menard. I'll be presenting at the end of this month at the Administrator Professional Day Conference for the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia on Friday, April 26. Part of my presentation in Excel is advanced functions in Excel, so I've definitely got to have the if statement in there. It is one of my favorite functions, and we use it all the time, whether it's in Excel or not, we're always asking if statements. I'm only going to pay this invoice if it's 30 days or older. I'm only going to give this student a passing grade if their score is this. So it's one of my favorite functions. So let me show you a couple tricks with it. And I'm going to do an accounts payable exercise too, which I'll pull up real quick. Show you where I'm headed. So I'm going to end up doing an accounts payable exercise, but I'm going to start off first with deciding whether we should give an employee a bonus or not. So I have a list of employees in column A. I've got the revenue they generated in column B. I only want to give them a bonus if they went over 80,000. And the bonus, how much is the bonus? The bonus is going to be, I'm going to keep this simple, $3,000. So equals if tab, the if statement has three arguments. Only one is required, and that's the very first one. What's your logical test? I'm going to say if B2 is greater than, I believe I said 80,000, comma, when I do a comma, I'm on the second argument. It says value of true. How much money do you want to give them if it's over 80,000? 3,000, comma, I'm on the last argument, value if false, a zero. I'm going to do close it, control enter, there's 3,000. So they only get 3,000 if they're over 80,000, so only the first three people should get it, and they do. When I keep auto filling down, I should get zeros, which shows as a dash with my formatting. Example number two, this is what I would do. <clears throat> Everything I did in cell C2 is correct. You can see it in the formula bar. But if I know I'm looking for 80,000, I would probably come over here and put So now I know I'm looking for over 80,000. So here's why I would do this. Equals if it's going to be the exact same formula almost if B2 greater than G1 I know I'm going to autofill down, so I want an absolute reference, F4 function key, comma, value of true, they still get 3,000, comma, value of false, they get a zero. The only thing that's different, when I pull down, I still should get 3,000 for the first three. Perfect. I'm going to put, since we're doing a little training video, I'm going to put the formula I used down below with the formula text function. Pull that over. Here's the big difference, and here's why I prefer what I did in column D compared to column C. In column D, I referenced G1. In column C, I typed in 80,000. So if by chance somebody comes along and says, hey, I only want to I want to give them a bonus, but we're going to give them a bonus now if it's over fifty-five thousand. I've got to edit the cell. Control Enter. But notice that Mary, I'm sorry, notice that Sean, who did sixty thousand, doesn't get the bonus because I forgot to autofill. So now if I don't remember to autofill, there's our bonus. But watch this. So column D is what I prefer. I change that to 55,000. Watch cell D5. There it is. So use an absolute reference if you need to when doing an if statement. 
Now let's go jump to the accounts payable one. I'm going to show you a cool trick. Still doing if statements. Today is Easter Sunday, April 21st, 2019. So it wants the today's date. Control semicolon will put in today's date in cell B4. But the problem is tomorrow's the 22nd, then the 23rd, then the 24th. So instead of control semicolon, equals T-O-D-A-Y, open parenth, control enter. It's reading the clock in my computer and it will update all the time. Control semicolon is static. It stays that date until I change it. But I've got a formula in there. I'm using the today function. So obviously, <clears throat> these are people that submitted invoices to us. Our terms are net 30. So I need to pay this invoice. I need to pay this one. I need to pay the 600. I'm just doing the math in my head. I'm taking 421. But now that one's not due. So a couple of them aren't due. So invoice due date is simply equals that plus 30, because our terms are net 30. Pull that down, autofill it down. How old is the invoice? It is today's date. I need to absolute reference that because I'm going to pull it down and always reference it. So F4 minus the invoice date. That first invoice is 34 days old. The next one's 51. So anything over 30 days is due. Number of days overdue is going to be equals 34 minus 30. And watch what happens when I autofill down. I get some negative numbers. I'm okay with the negative numbers, but if you start doing the average function, the average will include the negatives. So let's write an if statement here. So let me get rid of everything I just did. <clears throat> Equals if. My logical test, my first argument is if F7 greater than 30, because we're net 30, comma, value if true, well, that's going to be F7 minus 30. So that should give me the number 4 in this example. Comma, value if false, I'm going to put in a 0. I'm going to close it. So I should get the number 4 still. Control Enter. 4, 21, perfect. Keep going. Watch this though, instead of getting negatives, I get zero. <clears throat> so I intentionally did this by showing you the zeros, but the problem is zero goes into average. So really the number of days overdue, the average number of days is not 18 as it shows down here in the bottom. So instead on your if statements, instead of doing zero, I'm going to do double quotes twice, which means blank. So here we go now. Now I've got 25 for the average. Notice that there are blanks here. Let's test this. I'm going to change this 418 to 31519. And it went to seven days overdue. I'm going to undo, control Z. You can also, instead of doing a blank in between these double quotes, you can type in whatever text you want to. I'm going to put in not do. Pull it down. Probably align it to the right. There you go. So that is my little short if statement. I'm going to get into doing if and if, or, and nested ifs on Tuesday, 423. Because again, that's part of my presentation. Thank you for your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye-bye.